Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Chris Parsons on the line, and he's founder of Elevated Husbands. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. All right, Chris. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic. We're, we'll be talking about how you're helping Christian men really solve their marriage problems. And we'll talk about, you know, your journey and then also some of the things that maybe contribute to marriage problems in the first place. So excited to get your your take and your experience on this. But um, before we get into that, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Chris, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Chris, what mission matters to you? My mission is to help men experience God's love and goodness in their marriage. You know, I think uh, people have different ways of, of spreading the gospel and the good news and reaching hearts for reaching different people at different places. And my heart is really for reaching men who are struggling in their marriages. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great mission and uh, excited to have you on the show to talk about this topic. I feel like it's one that we don't address enough. So excited to bring this content to our audience. Um, and maybe just to get us started, um, tell us a little bit more about your background. Like, like, how did you get on this path or on this journey to helping men in their marriages? Yeah, I really feel like I've lived about a dozen different lives. Um, so I was an atheist for about 20 years. I actually became an atheist when I was five because I found a Christmas present in the closet a few days before Christmas. And then Christmas morning came and it said from Santa on it. And so I, uh, I was, you know, precocious, I guess you would say. And um, my mind immediately thought, okay, well, you lied about Santa. You know, it doesn't really make sense that he could fly to every house in the world in one night. And how did I ever believe that? And everybody around me is in on this lie and they're using this to control me. They're telling me there's this, you know, invisible person that can see everything that I do and that's going to reward me if I'm good or punish me if I'm bad. And that had kind of been my experience of God and what uh, religion was, was a a tool to control me. And so I felt that uh, if Santa was alive, then then God was alive in Christianity. And um, so I was an atheist through college. uh, And then towards the end of college, I actually, it was this beautiful, beautiful sunset. One of those sunsets where it looks like God just painted the sky with all the different colors of purple and orange, and it was incredible. And as I sat there and watched it, I felt awe, and I felt it was impossible for this to all exist and be random. You know, I didn't really, it no longer seemed feasible to me that all of this could have happened just by chance. Wow, so um, so you felt that in your heart, right? Like this movement. Yes, and uh, just a you know just a, a beautiful sunset is all it was, and and in that moment, I could no longer call myself an atheist. I didn't really know uh, that I was a Christian or anything like that, but I had this deep feeling that a God must exist. Hmm. And um, so then after college, I uh, started dating my now wife. And I had a coworker and they were both Christian. And I used to challenge my coworker Mm -hmm. daily. I mean, I was I was the guy that used to spend hours every day arguing on the internet about uh, you know why Christianity was dumb. And um, so I was open to the idea, but I I was very um, much kind of uh, against it just in terms of not really having experienced um, anything that that showed me that Christianity was true. Mm. And um, which, by the way, I was an internal auditor at the time. I graduated college with a degree in finance. Mm. And um, so 
I was doing that every day. I came at my coworker hard. I would come at my wife with questions, you know, well, oh, okay, you're saying the Bible's literal, but then it says, you know, God replaced this guy's heart of stone with flesh. And, you know, is that literal? And uh, just try, you know, to, to get them and, and make them caught. And, yeah. and what they showed me was that there was something different about them. There was something to their faith that actually made a difference to who they were and how they lived their lives. And the way that they loved me and loved people just generally really opened my mind to the idea that there could be something special and, and true in Christianity. Hmm. And um, so I started reading the Bible. I uh, had never really gone to church. Actually, when I was 13, my mom put me in confirmation class at, at uh, the Methodist church. And I told my mom, I don't believe and I'm not going to go. And she said, well, too bad you're going. <laughs> and so I went through the whole confirmation process. And then at the end, the pastor's wife took me in the little room and she said, do you take Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And I said, no, because uh, she, she was speechless. I mean, she, she had never had anybody say no before. Um, wow. Probably has never had it happen again. And um, she was very confused. I don't understand. You were one of the best kids in the class. Like, you, you were always engaged. And I said, yeah, but it doesn't make sense. You know, why did Jesus have to die? Couldn't God just wave his hand and forgive us? And, you know, why this, why that? So um, I uh, had never really gone to much church, but um, my experience with church to that point had largely been that um, religion was just a, a nice uh, thing that, that people said they believed in, but it didn't really impact who they were or how they lived their lives. And um, so I didn't go to, I didn't immediately start by going to church. I, I went uh, into the Bible. I literally read the, the Bible cover to cover twice and um, just wanted to, to see what it said for myself. And um, then I started going to church, meeting with pastors, priests, went on um, retreats and all sorts of stuff and, and really um, found my own journey, uh, eventually got baptized. Mm -hmm. and, um, so now I, I love uh, being able to, to spread the good word and, and tell people about what a difference being a Christian can make in your life. What, what an amazing story. And thank you for sharing that because it it's something that I feel like a lot of people that watch this can relate to, um, no matter what what end they're at in their journey, by the way, um, with, with God. So there's a lot of different things that you mentioned. And I guess one specific that I want to kind of pull out and just talk about a little bit longer is like this idea of um, of kind of like, like challenging, like you were, you were a challenger. I don't know if that's a specific term, but like challenging everything and kind of yeah. on, and going through it. So your path, I would argue, I, I mean, it's not necessarily the same one that everybody's path is different, obviously, but um, your path's a little bit different, right? Like you were, you're an atheist when to start, and then you were even an, an opponent to and challenging it, everything and kind of shooting things down, as you mentioned, like, what would you say, like, it was like to kind of when, when you finally had that point in your life, if, if there was a point or if it was a longer transition could have been, but what would you say, like kind of that felt like when it, when you finally kind of started accepting and you finally started your own process, whether that was reading the Bible or, or some of the other things you mentioned, like, what did that feel like? You know, there was, there was a lot of different stages for me because I had so much negative, uh, beliefs and associations with Christianity. Um, and so it, it was definitely a process for me. When I, when I first started considering myself a Christian, um, I believed in God. I believed in, in Jesus, but I didn't value religion at all. Um, I didn't value church or, or any of the things that, that go along with that. And it was just, it was my own hurts that were there and 
you know, things that you're told. Um, so, you know, one of the things that, that I learned in history class was that Christians had, you know, murdered all these people around the world and, and been the source of all this violence. And um, that was something very, very difficult for me uh, that, that was stopping me from um, really embracing all parts of Christianity and the, the going to church and all those things. And uh, really, it was definitely a process. Um, I wish it had been a, a, a one-time uh, epiphany that uh, just washed me with peace. But um, it was a it was a couple year uh, journey for me. Really, a, you know, probably about a two year journey to the point where I really felt that um, I no longer had those hurts and and issues. Uh, holding me back, and um, then from there, the the, the rest of the journey, uh, which I, I'm sure we'll get into, but then then bad things happen in your life, you know, and so then you you're faced with doubt about how good is God, you know, um, and so there's there's definitely been points in my life where I had to really reassess what what being a Christian meant to me and how that affected my life and how I was going to move forward in life with that. And so taking, taking it a step further. So now you, you know, you've accepted Christ, you've uh, you're, you're growing stronger in your faith. Um, Where, what did this transition like look like for you to then start moving into the space of helping others with their marriage, helping other Christian men with their marriage? Like, like how did that build up lead up? So I originally came into Christianity um, as bullheaded as I had rejected it. And so I really got into, you know, the different schisms of, of whether, you know, uh, the, it, it was Protestant versus Catholic or Calvinist versus whatever and all these different things. And you went far with people. it, right? <laughs> yeah. You went Absolutely. far with it, it sounds like. Some people are watching this that are Christian, like, wow, he, he went far. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I, I went deep and, and really, um, you know, I, I, it was very um, antagonistic, I guess you would call it. I, I really. I enjoyed... said challenger. That was my, yeah. that was my polite word. <laughs> <laughs> I was, um, you know, I was bullheaded and um, I, I, it was a pride issue, right? I really enjoyed feeling smarter than other people. And so, um, you know, I would, I would challenge them and argue with them and fight over all these different things. And so, you know, what I found through my journey was that um, none of those things, it's, it's about love. You know, that's that's what it really comes down to. And um, uh, it's not about me. You know, that was a that was a hard thing for me to accept. You know, we we all want to think that it's all about us. But, you know, what I think and um, whether I think this is right or that or right, it's just an opinion and uh, it doesn't really change anything. Um, And I wasn't loving people. You know, as much as I might have convinced myself otherwise, I wasn't loving them by by trying to argue with them and feel better about myself. Yeah. Um, and so it really became about loving people. And then um, my wife and I actually, our first child, we had been married about two years, and um, my wife got pregnant, and she was nine months pregnant with her first child, a, a boy, and we had a stillborn. So she had to give birth almost nine months pregnant to a dead baby. Hmm. Um, And that was extremely challenging to my faith. Um, Not, not that I doubted God's existence or, or whether it was true, but what it meant, you know, uh, if, is this a result of being Christian is having bad things happen to you? Is this, um, you know, does does being a Christian not uh, prevent bad things like this from happening to you? You know, what what's the point? Why are we believing? So, you know, I I 
tend to see that um, bad things happen to everybody and it's not the way that God designed the world. It's, it's a result of the world. You know, the fall of man is uh, when sin came into the world. That's when um, all the, the bad things that happen in our lives um, aren't necessarily caused by our sin, but just the fact that there is sin. And um, so, you know, believing in God, being a Christian, it doesn't prevent these bad things from happening. But what it does do is it gives you the grace and it gives you the power to move forward in gratitude and just being thankful for all the good things. We now have four healthy kids. Um, my oldest son just turned nine and um, my youngest son, I've got two daughters in the middle, but my youngest son will turn two next month. So it's amazing. I saw the pictures on, on your site, by the way, beautiful family. Amazing. Thank you so much. So, um, you know, incredible blessings. And um, so that happened after we've been married a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, suffered with depression and really um, just struggled to move forward um, without being dragged down by the weight of that. And a few years later, um, that's when my wife and I started having real issues in our marriage. We had started off with some issues, right? Like every couple does. Mm -hmm. And over the years, things just built and built and built. Mm -hmm. And it was around the seven year mark. I remember because people would say that uh, the, the two most common years to get divorced were the first year and the seventh year. Mm. And um, so it was around the seven year mark. Things were really um, starting to, to, to get bad where it was a lot of fighting, a lot of arguing. Um, we felt more like roommates. There was no love. Um, we didn't really, you know, as much as we cared about each other, we weren't really caring for each other. A lot of bitterness and resentfulness. And, and so that set me on this journey to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. And um, within the course of a year, I was able to completely turn around my marriage where everything was so much better. I felt respected. We both were getting our needs met. Mm -hmm. Just truly having harmony and joy in our home. Mm -hmm. And so uh, after that experience, I started helping guys, just, you know, family, friends, guys from Bible study, just, you know, telling them, hey, you know, I, I had a problem like that. Here's what I did. Mm. And a year ago, um, I had uh, grown a cleaning business, built it up. It was doing really well, and I was barely working. I only had to work, you know, four or five hours a week, mm -hmm. and I was bored. And uh, I really started thinking about, is this all there is? You know, I, I want more out of life, and, and what do I really want to do? Um, I didn't particularly care about cleaning. It was just a, a means to an end. And uh, so a lot of prayer and what I realized was that this was something that I had in me to be able to help men on this journey and that it was a gift and that I should be sharing it. So that's what I'm doing now. Oh, what, what an amazing story. And um, when you decided to, I mean, because obviously you've had many blessings and when you decided to then be a blessing and then just to, to start helping others and, and, and even just in the early days, let's say, of just helping people in your before there was a formal um, program and before there was infrastructure. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But in the early days, like what what started happening and like when you start teaching other people and when you start helping other people, like what started happening for you? Um, actually, when I first started helping people, uh, it, it did not go that great um, because mm -hmm. I was giving surface level advice. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I remember I had, I had a friend and um, he was struggling and his wife was very upset with him. And, and um, so I told him word for word all the things to say. I, I literally like wrote the text messages for him to send to her. And um, so things turned around. She, 
she was much happier and it only lasted a, a few days um, mm -hmm. because she quickly realized that those messages she didn't know that they came from me but she quickly realized that they weren't congruent with what he actually was being and doing and believing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I quickly realized that it's actually a process of transformation that has to happen in the men. And it's not just as simple as uh, knowing the, the words to say. Knowing the words to say um, really helps, but you've got to have the heart behind it so that it's, it's sincere to you and not just me speaking through you. So I know that um, obviously every marriage is going to be complex. There's going to be their own opportunity areas, their own challenges, of course. Every dynamic is going to be different. But what are some of the common things or themes that tend to cause to, you know, marriage problems? I think the top two are number one, being roommates, and number two, arguing or fighting a lot. And um, sometimes the, you've got both, where you, you cycle between both of them. Um, so being roommates would be uh, what, what a lot of women will say is, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, a kind of what I would call a roommate situation. You're doing life together. You're, you know, you're taking care of the home, taking care of the kids, mm -hmm. paying bills, you're, you're doing all these things, but there's no passion. Mm -hmm. There's little to no intimacy, just no uh, true, um, you know, what, what we think, what we thought we were signing up for when we got married, right? We, we wouldn't agree to um, spend our lives and, and commit financially and raise kids and everything with just a roommate. And yeah. uh, so all those things that make a marriage a marriage are missing. Mm. And the second one being arguing, that can look different. Um, some people, you know, they they're yell and throw things, um, but other people, um, you know, maybe they suppress it. And then there's a, you know, a blow up fight and things are quickly, you know, can't, you know, the, the fire is put out, but it, it stays burning and it's just uh, really about, you know, past hurts and a bitterness and frustration that is constantly there between, between the husband and wife. And mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times the arguments aren't even really about whatever thing they're arguing about. You know, it's not, it's not really about how you do the dishes. There's, there's other real problems underneath that. So Chris, I want to transition a bit here. So I, I want, we'll continue the discussion, but before um, let's get into Elevated Husbands. So tell us a little bit more about the organization. Yeah. So I founded Elevated Husbands a year ago and it's a program. We have the Happy Healthy Marriage Reset Program. Mm -hmm. And what we do is walk men through the process of the changes that they need to make in order to create a happy, healthy marriage. Hmm. And, you know, one of the top questions that I always get is, why do you work with men instead of couples? Is that, do you have that question? Oh, I can see it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, and um, the reason is twofold. Uh, number one, it's because I know what the journey looks like for men, because that's hmm. the journey that I went through. Hmm. And so it's, Really, men have the power to make these changes on their own. Now, mm -hmm. it, there's two people in a relationship. Uh, and so you do need your wife to um, play ball, right? For lack of a better uh, word. But you have the power to increase her desire to play ball and, mm -hmm. and be a part of the solution because there's a lot of guys that I work with that their wife is kind of resigned to uh, accepting how things are or resigned to 
uh, thinking that they can't change and they're done trying and they want a divorce. Mm. And so, you know, as long as there's an open line of communication, and mm -hmm. I can't help guys that, you know, they're, they, they don't talk to their, their wives, they're separated, their wife doesn't want to talk to them. There's really not much opportunity there. Um, but as long as there's an open line of communication, then there's an opportunity for the man to, to change the direction mm -hmm. of where things are going. And a lot of guys don't necessarily realize the path that they're on. You know, the guys that I talked to who are already separated, um, they know, they know what, what the next step is, but there's a lot of guys who their wife is telling them, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And she's mentioning divorce when they get in arguments mm. and they're not really realizing that the next step for them, if they don't change something mm. is separation and eventually divorce mm. because people can only stay unhappy for so long before they, they, they want to make a change. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times I, I talk to guys and they'll say that their, their wife is having a midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. And um, when I look at that, I say, well, wouldn't you be? I mean, you've done all the things that you thought you were supposed to do, but you're unhappy, you're unfulfilled in your life, and you don't know what's wrong. All you can do is change everything. <laughs> and so I think, you know, that that is something that men have the power to influence. We can't control other people. We can't make our wives love us or, uh, you know, change or do anything different, but we do have the power to create a desire in her for things to be better. And so, so that is how I uh, help men is, is by showing them that path. So, so tell me a little bit more about the program, like how it works, like length of time, like, like format, how it's delivered. Give me a little bit more there. Yeah. So it's a, the happy, healthy marriage reset program. It's a 12 week program mm -hmm. and it's about eight hours of content. And the content, I'll kind of run down a few things, you know, we're, we're getting rooted in our faith, which means really understanding, um, what God wants for us in our marriage and in our lives. And, um, you know, one of the big things that I believe is that heaven and hell are not restricted to the afterlife. We have the power to create heaven on earth and we have the power to create hell on earth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, when we're in unhappy marriages, we're in hell on earth. Mm -hmm. And so really understanding what has gotten us there in order to then escape that hell and create mm -hmm. heaven on earth, um, bringing your best self to the marriage. And that's a big thing that is about the, the personal transformation that has to happen before the marriage can be transformed. Mm -hmm. Then about, you know, that I, I kind of consider there to be the big three things that a happy, healthy marriage needs. One is passion. And when I say passion, I'm talking about the the physical and spiritual intimacy of loving each other, caring about each other, feeling valued. Two is both getting our needs met. You know, infidelity tends to happen. In my experience, I haven't been cheating, but in my experience with my clients, mm. infidelity is a result of not getting our needs met. And so when you understand what your wife's needs are and how to meet them, then you're empowered to feel confident that that won't happen again or won't happen at all. And number three, shared values. When I say shared values, you and your wife don't have to have the same values, but you have to have an appreciation for each other's values. And that really is what makes us feel valued and heard is when Somebody knows us to our very deepest level and they care about the things that we care about. Mm. Then there's, there's other parts, you know, setting boundaries, all sorts of things. Tearing down walls is a big one. A lot of the guys I deal with their wives, there's, there's been so many, so much broken trust, so many past hurts. 
their wives have put up walls to protect themselves. And so, you know, a lot of guys will realize that they have made mistakes and they're trying to change, but they're not getting anywhere because you can't just change and then they'll lower those walls. You, you actually have, there's a process you have to go through in order to tear those walls down in order to be able to show your wife that you've changed. So Chris, okay. I, I know that we're just um, kind of scratching the surface on this, but I want to go yes. a little bit further and kind of what this content looks like. So when somebody's yes. going through, um, obviously you said over eight hours of content there, um, are they also working with you one-on-one? -on -one? Are they working with your team? Is there another component there? Like, give me a feel for that. Yeah. Yeah. So the content is all around building your awareness and understanding of how things work. And then there's weekly coaching calls where we problem solve and oh, that's awesome. So then coaching. they also get a call as well. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's, it's so important. The understanding yeah. is very helpful, but then you need to be able to apply it to your specific situation. And that's where the calls come in or, you know, Hey, you know, I thought this was what I was supposed to do. I tried this and it didn't work. Here's what happened. Okay. Mm -hmm try this instead, right? So we're, we're really actually making sure that you're making progress and, and mm -hmm. getting results to create that happy, healthy marriage. That's awesome. And so what, what's the feedback that you've gotten from some, of your, from some of your clients that have gone through this and worked through this with you? You know, a lot of, I would say the biggest thing is going from hopelessness to mm -hmm. hopefulness because <laughs> a lot of the guys aren't really sure that there's much hope of mm. things changing. And there's, there's a, a vague sense of hope that mm. things could be different, but they're so frustrated because they've prayed for so long for God to change things and he hasn't changed them. Mm. And, you know, the, what I think of it as, uh, I think of it as a metaphor, like putting your hand on a hot stove, and your hand is burning and you're in pain and you're praying for God to take away the pain, but you're not moving your hand. Mm. And so in my experience, that's not the way that prayer works. You know, and we, we've got a whole section about the power of praying. And um, one of the biggest things is if you are the cause, then God isn't going to change the effect. Mm. And so it's up to you to take your hand off that burning stove in order to deal with that pain and not just to pray for God to change it. A lot of guys are stuck in that, you know, praying. And when I say prayer, they're, they're really just wishing that God's going to change the results that they're seeing in their marriage, but they're not making any changes to make that happen. And so going through the program is really the way to take your hand off that stove. It's, it's the way to create that joy and peace in your home to be the hero that your wife needs you to be. Wow. What an amazing story and, and program. And I love the part, the interactive part in that people actually do get the opportunity to work through what they're doing and they have the content for the self-paced part of it as well. Um, I know we just barely um, kind of uh, scratched the surface on the content side of things. And I do want people to follow up and to, and to learn more and we'll put all in the show notes, we'll put all the websites and all that good stuff. But um, just want to say like, so what's next for you? I mean, just what's next for you? what's next for the program um what's next yeah well we're going to be reaching more men we're going to be uh hopefully doing more around parenting currently we have one bonus training around parenting hmm. um, but i think that there's absolutely um more that we can do to help men and dads be the not just the husband but also the father that god has called them to be yeah it's awesome. And if somebody is watching this and they want to learn more about Elevated Husbands and they want to connect with you and your team, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? So you can go to our website, www.elevatedhusbands.com. And on there, you can sign up for our emails. You can actually book a call with me mm -hmm. if you're struggling with some of the problems that we talked about here today. 
and we'll hop on a call and I'll help you get clear on what's going on, what's working, what's not working in your marriage. You could also join our free Facebook group, which is Happy Healthy Marriage for Christian Husbands. Fantastic. And uh, we'll put all that stuff, as I mentioned before, in the show notes so people can just click on it and head right on over to your website and to connect. Um, And speaking to the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, we're a platform that's all about bringing on entrepreneurs, executives and experts and having them share like why, why they do what they do, like what gets them motivated to go out there in the marketplace and in the world overall and to make a difference. Um, if that's the kind of content that you're into, we definitely welcome you to hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And uh, Chris, really, it has been a pleasure getting to know more about your story, your walk with the Lord. Also, all of the great work that you're doing through Elevated Husbands to really um, fulfill your calling and helping others with their, their marriage and their marriage problems and, uh, and, give, and just serving as a beacon of hope out there and starting that dialogue, as you mentioned, which is just so crucial. So again, thank you for being on the show. It's really been a pleasure. Thanks, Adam.